I found every armor trim and made an amazing armor display with almost 200 sets of full netherite armor. So how did I get here? Well, this is another chapter of my story in my hardcore world. So grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy another 400 days. Let's start at the beginning. First, I need all the armor trims. Playing in this world for well over 500 days already, I have gathered a total of 10 out of the 16 armor trims. Meaning the 6 trims that I'm missing are the Vex trim, the Dune trim and the Shaper, Razor, Host and Wayfinder trim. So let's start by getting a map to a woodland mansion and now we just have to follow it to find the trim and here it is looting this place should be pretty straightforward Alright, that was simple enough. Moving on to the dune trim. I simply have to loot a few of these desert pyramids. Boom. Bam. Oh, bop. Bada bop, boom. Pow. Oh! By the way, it's actually possible to obtain suspicious sand or gravel in survival as well. So that's what I did here. Anyways, let's get back on track. The remaining trims are all found at a trail rune, so I'll have to find one. Now, let's mine out the entirety of this trail rune and see how many of the four trims we managed to find. And after clearing out the whole thing, I only got two trims so far. So let's find another trail rune and do the same thing again. Three hours later. Twelve seconds later. Et voila, now we're all set. So what's the plan now? Basically, I want to build a factory which for one displays all 16 different armor trims in all 10 different colors. And second, it should act as an easy crafting station to duplicate all the trims. Then I want another 17 sets as a selector panel, 16 sets, one for each trim, plus another one for the netherite upgrade. And at last, a replica of my own armor which consists of three different trims. Adding all of that together, I need 178 sets of netherite of which all but one have four armor trims applied to them. That alone makes 700 12 netherite ingots or 2848 ancient debris and 9940 diamonds to duplicate all the netherite upgrades and armor trims. That seems like a little more than what I currently have. So how do I get my hands on these resources? Well for diamonds I could use a tunnel bore and for netherite I'd probably have to use TNT to reveal the ancient debris. That however would take way too much time. If only there was a diamond or netherite farm. Well uh, there isn't. Technically speaking that is. But there is a solution. This machine created by cubic meter is called the infinity bore. It works similar to a tunnel bore. However, it is stationary and rather warps the TNT to very specific locations. This even works in the nether. There will still be all the lava, but the blocks are still getting blown up. It's a very complicated machine to explain, so if you want to know how it works in detail, cubic meters video is linked down below. Using this machine, it won't be as time consuming to get the diamonds and netherite. We can already save a lot of diamonds on the armor if we simply trade for it instead of crafting it. So let's start right there. One eternity later. <laughs> and here we have all the armor required. Let's unenchant it and move on to the factory itself. <laughs> Alright, now that that's done, let's continue with collecting resources for the factory. Okay, step one is done. Next, we simply need to make some room and build the factory. Thank you. 
I wanted to keep it pretty bland with the colors on the outside to match that factory type of look. On the inside is an entrance hall with the armor display and in the back is the crafting system. Here's a panel showing how much of the resources we have. With the lectern we can define how many duplicates we want to craft and on the other side we can select which template we want to copy. It's by far not perfect but I think I did a great job creating this. Now we can move on to the infinity board. Well one of the two. Let's start with the one in the overworld. But because collecting the diamonds would be pretty annoying with a lot of mobs constantly attacking me, let's build a mob switch. This disables mob spawning completely, essentially making the world peaceful. Now I need to trade with a villager once, turn them into a zombie villager, and now they count towards the mob cap, but do not despawn ever. I need a total of 70 of them to fill up the mob cap completely, so let's get going. Many months later. The scaffolding prevents entity cramming and using this lever we can simply push them in and out of the spawn chunks which turns the mob switch on and off. Now we can tackle the infinity board in peace. First I need to drain this area and mine out a lot of blocks underground and then I can build this absolute monster of a machine. So let's cue the time lapse. Finally it is built. All that's left is to stock the dupers with TNT and add a bunch of minecarts. Now it's ready to remove the world. Well, only a part of it. So let's blow up only a small area to test the machine first. I just need to prime it and fly to this specific chunk. Eventually. And now it is done. I've done the AFK time and this is what it looks like. As you can see there's items everywhere. Now I can go around and collect all the diamonds. So let's make the area larger this time. In total it spans an area of roughly 200 blocks wide by 5000 blocks long. This will take a while to load all the TNT, so without further ado, let's prime the board and wait until it is done. One eternity later. Alright, it's been about 6 hours and I have confirmed that it is done. That means we can now collect our 10,000 diamonds. Oh my god, it's so laggy. This area goes on for 5,000 blocks. Anyways, before any of these items despawn, let's reduce our render distance to 2 chunks and then systematically collect mainly diamonds but occasionally also other resources. So let's start the grind. And at long last, after 4 hours I have reached the end of the tunnel and I have more than enough diamonds. I have almost 7 shulker boxes full of diamonds plus half a shulker box full of diamond ore. And now I'll have to do all of that again in the nether. Yay. Anyways, let's start by breaking some bedrock. Then let's mine some blocks. Let's outline the area I need to drain with sand and then stock the mob switch for the nether as well. Alright, the nether switch is working as well. This means we can now drain out this entire area. Well, well, well. My pickaxes are on life support, so let's go repair them and then we can build the same machine here as well.
okay we're done with building all that's left is to afk the machine and then we can collect the ancient debris so let's prime the board once again and wait well then let's see whether everything worked out and as you can see all the blocks are gone except the ancient debris and the lava i'm sure someone could design something that'll remove the lava automatically but i'm not that smart so i'll just use fire resistance potions now that we have that as well it's time to collect the ancient debris so let's cue another montage And after a casual 7 hours of the same thing over and over again, I'm done. I have enough ancient debris for this project, even though I haven't yet quite hit the end of the tunnel, so I'll leave this there in case we need some more ancient debris in future projects. Anyways, let's smelt this down into netherite scraps. I don't even have enough gold to craft it into netherite. All that's left is to craft all the trims, upgrade all the armor to netherite and apply the trims to the armor sets and we're done. Alright, this is the final armor set, which uses the same pattern as the armor I'm wearing myself. And here we go. This has been the toughest challenge so far in this world, but in the end, eventually I got there as well. We have every single armor trim in all 10 different colors on a set of netherite armor. Next episode, we'll reach our first 1000 days, which I'm super excited for. So what's on the menu next time? Well, I'm gonna move out. I've spent over 900 days in my starter base, and it's time for an automatic storage system, and in general, an upgrade for a base. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video as always, and I'll see you next time.